So I've made it to Summercraft, which is the final part of my trip. I'll be here for three days, three full days, and I am super, super excited. This to me is the is the bit I've been waiting for this whole time. So made it to Summercraft. Oh my god, this is crazy. Now, anyway, I did order some chicken in a sauce, uh, Paris sauce, I think. Anyway, um, smells amazing, and I'm sure it's going to taste amazing as well. I don't have a knife, so I'm going to have to the meat is so succulent, so good. Um, you know what? I can't. I can't pick the taste. I cannot pick the, the spices that are in this. But it's really nice. Like I want to say, it's like um, mustard seed. Like this. I've definitely had similar tastes, but this, yeah. Oh, really good. Really, really good. So, today I am in Summerkant, and my hotel is down there, about 10 metres. And, um, and there's the Rekistan. So, again, <laughs> really great location. <laughs> Let's go see it. I'm a little bit nervous, actually. Um, it's been one of those things that I've never, like it was only ever a dream to be able to come here. So I just, I don't know, I'm nervous, it's weird. So I uh, arrived, I bought my ticket, it was 50,000 some, so about $5 to come in. And um, I, there was a, a man sitting on the gate and he asked if I wanted a guide. I went, oh yeah, look, he said, look, there's an audio guide. I went, yeah, yeah, no worries. Really quiet, not a lot of people here. Um, it's, you know, just after eight in the morning. Anyway, and so I said, yeah, audio guide. And he's learning English and so he offered to take me around for free to practice his English. So I was like, yes, please. Um, anyway, he has told me some really great details, which I wouldn't have known otherwise. Um, I was happy to go with the audio guide, but it was even better having someone actually explain things to me. So I've just had an amazing experience. And I'm gonna share some of these little details with you, whoever you are. <laughs> so this is Oleg Beck. Madrasa, and uh, as the guide was telling me, you can tell when a building's a madrasa because there are two doors, one on each side. One of them is for the students, and the other is for the teacher. So um, there is Islam, uh, Islamic writing, Arabic writing, sorry, all over the madrasas. Uh, and what we'll find is closer to the door where the students go in, there's more writing that says things like you know, study well and learn. Yeah learn a lot and all of those type of you know motivational things that you would tell students even nowadays so um yeah that's kind of really fascinating now uh Alec Beck was the grandson of Amir Tamur and he was the the ruler here in this Khanate I think it was a Khanate uh well um yeah for I can't remember how many years 50 or 60 years I can't, I can't remember but yeah so that is uh, a little bit of information about that now this particular minaret um, is not in its original location I mean, well it is but it isn't it was falling 
and it was falling that way. So back in the 1930s, 1932, which is also near my grandparents' wall, um, the Russians lifted it up, turned it 180 degrees, and now it is leaning in the opposite direction. But it is not falling down. So um, I'll share a photo of a photo where you can see it leaning, and it had they, they had it all tied down so it wouldn't um, it wouldn't fall over uh, until they fixed it. writing um, what was script writing same thing so this is the script that I was talking about it does um, speak to the students it's also on the door and it is also uh, on this um, motif up here as well so yeah lots of motivational speeches for the student and this is the teacher side it does not have any of the same uh, script because the teachers have already learned In the Ulubek uh, Madrasa, you are able to climb up to the top floor and uh, overlook the courtyard. There's a coffee shop up here and some other shops, so it's just beautiful. Planche, four for phone, and five for book, plus six for book also. One book stand, six position, four position for book, two position for phone, and like that. I just climbed the right. Oh my goodness, this is amazing, incredible. of experience. <laughs> I don't think I can say I've heard much better than this. I'm literally at the top of the middle ramp 
in Richestad. <laughs> Yes, I did just climb to the top of the minaret. Amazing! <laughs> oh, I don't know how I got this lucky. So this madrasa is the Tilikari, Tilikari uh, madrasa. And um, we are going to go in. There is uh, the gold mosque in there. And I've already seen it and it is stunning. So I can't wait to go back in and do some videos and photos of it because it's just beautiful. Uh, there's also some fun facts about it. Well, a fun fact, fact about it. So, yeah, we'll get to that. Um, I, just, I could just stay here all day and soak all this up. Golden Mosque and um, one of the interesting fun facts about the Golden Mosque here is that this ceiling is flat. Now I have been standing here for ages trying to work it out um, but I can't, it, it just it looks so realistically like a dome so um, I haven't been able to see <laughs> where it ends, where it begins. Um, but yeah, apparently this is one, well, this is the first known uh, 3D painting. Um, and the other thing that the guide was telling me, that the middle of the um, ceiling, that represents the person. And then you've got um, the growing family, growing family until you die and you become a star. Yeah, I thought that was super cool. So Registan Square is made up of the three madrasas and this is the last one that I'm going to go see. This is the Shodor, Shodor one and it's the one with the tigers. It's pretty cool. Now the guide was telling me um, the symbolism of the tiger. So the tiger is the student. Uh, it's chasing knowledge and if it catches knowledge then um, that's the teacher on the back of the on the back of the tiger and it's it's kind of enlightenment like it's um yeah sun uh bright bright so yeah that's that's pretty cool um so i'm looking forward to going over there as well um all of these buildings have been absolutely stunning and incredible so another fun fact that the guide was telling me is that registan is persian for sandy um, and once upon a time this area was very sandy so
that the guide told me was this was never actually used as a madrasa. It was built for one. They didn't use it. So, yeah. Another thing that the guide told me was prior to Russian occupation, uh, women stayed at home. That was what they were meant to do. And um, But then when the Russians uh, invaded and, um, in the 1920s, yeah, 1920s, um, they insisted that uh, women work and girls go to school and get an education. And um, yeah, so there were some good things that happened. Um, definitely in terms of, I guess, women's liberation. which are like a, just like a dumpling and a salad. Um, Uzbek people really like to have salad with their meals. And this is just, yeah, simple. Uh, I, cucumber and, and tomato, and you'll find that on every menu everywhere, pretty much. Um, very dressing. Um, Mm. A little bit more sour than sour cream, so I'm um, not quite sure. I'm a bit, just a bit worried that these are going to be quite hot, uh, given their dumplings and dumplings are generally quite quite hot after they've just been cooked. So what I might do is take out a bit of the uh, inside. Mm. Is delicious. It's meat of some description, uh, onion, spices. And even a bit of gristle. <laughs> Alright, now for the pastry, let's just get a little bit here. I know I've completely butchered the way I've eaten this, but mm. really, really delicious. Um, you know, the food's just been great here. Oh, it's amazing. And so cheap. Um, this would be lucky to cost me $5. So maybe a bit more than that, but hardly anything. So, oh, it's so cheap. It's so tasty. a short stroll <laughs> it's basically downhill so it is stro a stroll um, away from the Registan complex is the Amir Tamer um, mausoleum complex so um, yeah looking forward to this one it is where Amir Tamer is laid to rest um, and other members of his family as well so I think yeah so yeah um, it's, again just mind-blowingly beautiful uh, already and I haven't even caught it yet.
our way to the Rockabond uh, Mausoleum, which is a couple hundred meters away from the Amir Tamir, uh, Mausoleum complex. And this place also has a bunch of like handicraft things. And so I did get a cushion cover, which I have been eyeing off the cushion covers for a, well, since Bukhara. Um, and I thought, just do it, just buy it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it is lovely. It's a blue pomegranate design and um, in silk thread, so it looks beautiful. Right, well, the mausoleum. Let's go into the mausoleum and have a look. It's just a short walk uh, to the Amitma statue monument here that's in the park. Um, it's huge, it's, <laughs> it's massive. Um, yeah, might as well just make a short stop on your way past. Fifteen minute walk from the Registan. Um, there is this mausoleum here, and it is for Abu Mansora Al Machiridi. And um, yeah, it's a pretty one to look at. That looking forward to going and have a look. Hotel. Um, I've been averaging about 17 and a half thousand steps every day, so I'm absolutely exhausted. <laughs> Actually, I'm not exhausted, it's just my feet are really, really sore. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I'm just gonna walk slowly. Oh wow, that's a really cool suntan. Uh, mm, uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'm just gonna take it easy, go back to the hotel, um, rest for a little bit because then I wanted to go out to the Registan again uh, for the light show so uh, that should be amazing <laughs> I took this amazing time lapse of the sun setting over the Registan I was here for about an hour and a half which my poor tired feet really didn't like but I think the results are beautiful you can see the changing of the colors in the sky and how that impacts the colors on the building. Just, just stunning, just incredible.
was amazing. Um, <clears throat> except for the moment when I decided to uh, try and bite into a star anise. So try to avoid that next time. Anyway, it only cost 34,000 song, which is, yeah, $3.50 if that. So amazing, amazing value. That included a drink. Um, so yeah, amazing value. And now for the amazing light show on the Registan. This show does commence sharply at 9 p.m. It has about six different songs that it goes through and it has different light shows for each song. It does finish at 9.30 sharp and it is half an hour that you will just sit there in amazement and awe. observatory this morning um, and I came here first because it was opened earlier uh, at 8 a.m. which is um, nice and early so I am yeah I'm actually really super excited about this um, there's a little museum here and there's um, some ruins that unfortunately the original building no longer exists um, but it would have been magnificent if it did <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so I'm going to go into the little museum, see what's in there, see what I can learn and um, yeah, it's going to be great. Has some really good information in there um, and yeah 30,000 song to get in and not bad uh, but now here is the quadrant that we're gonna go see it's gonna be awesome in terms of um, uh, what is it seasons and you know the year and things like that but also celestial bodies so amazing so cool so, so cool 
I've just walked to Afra Siob from the observatory and if you like torturing yourself and enjoy walking uh, then walk uh, otherwise spend the two dollars and get a taxi or an uber uh, or sorry it's not an uber it's a yandex anyway and um i've just made it here and uh yeah there's some camels well i mean not real camels <laughs> and i'm about to go in and check it out and see what i can learn Today, 33, although I'm not as warm as it has been. Um, so I'm not sure how much of it I'll get out there and explore. <laughs> just, I'll just is that this was an old ancient city uh, and it was a palace that was it was just like any other you know ancient city and um, it was from the 7th century so yeah a real long time ago it was uh, pre uh, pre-islamic I think that's the term I think yeah pre-islamic so long long time ago back to the seventh century this is just incredible like it's yeah it's really amazing so um i was kind of hoping that you couldn't get into the site because then that would <laughs> give me reason not coming because I'm a little bit of a crazy walker when I'm on holidays. Anyway, so um, there seems to be conflicting information uh, about the date of the settlement. So I just saw another sign that said six to four centuries uh, before common era. So um, that's <laughs> a lot earlier than the seventh century uh, common era. So unless we just take it to mean that it was occupied for that entire time which it could very well have been um i'm walking up the hill uh yeah so who knows except it was a very very old ancient city i've just been walking again and this is hazrat kiza uh mosque and it's another just stunning example of the Islamic architecture. And then I will be making my way over here uh, eventually. I think I'm going somewhere else first and then I'm going there. But anyway, um, yeah, legs feel on it. <laughs> but it's been really awesome.
mosque also does have on the grounds the mausoleum of Sultan Karamov, who was the first president of the Republic of Uzbekistan. So it's uh, pretty sacred. So this is the Sheikh Zinda Memorial Complex, and we are going to go with one. And um, yeah, it's got uh, a mausoleum and some mosques as well. So uh, yeah, it should be, should be great. Is, if you count the same number of steps going up and going in, uh, your wishes will come true. So, <laughs> yeah, I think of a wish. <laughs> Bear with me through the next few minutes because I have included a whole lot of footage here. And the reason for that is there are just so many mausoleums all in a row and they're so beautiful, each and every one individually. So you can skip forward a little bit if you like, but uh, you know, if you do come here in, in, in person, you will just, this I think was honestly um, one of the highlights of my trip. Yes, incredible, just st stunning. Um, it does get a bit tight in places, so if there's lots of uh, tourists, you will find bottlenecks. But um, yeah, it's just, I definitely, definitely recommend coming out. So I did get the same number of steps going up as I did coming down, which is great. I'm not going to tell you how much it is, so you can uh, count them for yourselves. <laughs> but uh, yeah, now I'm going to have to think of a wish to make. 
it is lunchtime. Maybe I can wish for a really delicious meal. place while well, I was walking from one place to the next out from the, mausole the mausoleum um, through to oh, I think it's another mausoleum oh, anyway um, so it is uh, I don't know I think it's about one o'clock anyway I've decided um, to get some lunch so I've ordered some pork uh, it looks like it's a quail leg this time tiny little leg um, and it came with a salad the usual uh, cucumber and uh, onion and tomato salad. This, this one's got dill, so it smells amazing. Got a piece of bread, but there's no way I'm going to be able to eat the bread as well as all of this. There's just no way. So let's get into it. This one's got more in it than the last time. Again, that meat just falls apart in your mouth, it just melts. Um, mm, mm, really, really, really good. <laughs> it's amazing. I'm probably going to eat the whole thing and I'm going to be stuffed and I'm going to be waddling around all afternoon. Mmm. Mmm, that's so good. Mm, really good. I have made it to the Bibi Carnum. Yes, mausoleum complex, uh, and it <laughs> again is just one of these just amazing uh, displays of architecture, and I oh, can't believe it. It's <sighs> every time I turn around, there's just something else. <laughs> is the Bibi Khanum Mausoleum. Um, now it does, I have to admit, and it's terrible for me to say this, um, but it does look much, much more impressive on the outside than it does on the inside. Um, a lot of the rooms are not um, restored. They're just, um, they've been, I guess, uh, restored to a point so that they're not going to have any further uh, damage, but they're not um, done up with all the tiles and painting and things like that so um but yeah still beautiful still would recommend coming and seeing it i'm staying at this hotel for four nights and um i did choose it due to two things uh proximity to the registrar and price obviously so um it, I, I considered it to be quite good value and i think it was about 50 dollars a night and yeah, I mean, there's not very many hotels you can get that uh, much closer. And tonight though, it's the first night that I've actually come up here onto the terrace. So they do have a terrace with amazing views across the city. After eating Bob for lunch, and then a peach for afternoon tea and a double size Snickers bar. I'm not super hungry. <laughs> so I've ordered a, it's what I would probably call a kebab back in Australia. It's a, yep, meat in a lavish style wrap.
The taste is amazing. I don't know if it's dill. I think there's a lot of dill in a, in a lot of meals. But it's better than any kebab I've ever had at home. Oh, is that bad of me to say? day in uh well my last full day sorry in uzbekistan completely so uh it's a little bittersweet i love going on uh holidays and experiencing new things new cultures new foods and seeing amazing things but um it's yeah i'm also always really ha happy to go home to my comfort zone uh being the introvert that i am so um I feel like I've exhausted all the massive main attractions in Samarkand. Uh, I was going to go to Sharizabs, Shah, which is a two hour drive uh, south of here, but I do get uh, quite easily car sick, so the thought of a two hour drive really um, wasn't, and, and that's each way really wasn't appealing to me so I'm going to just tick a few other little things off um, that I hadn't haven't seen so I'm going to go to see an ancient spring I don't think it's much there I think it's just a bit of a hole in the ground but I'll go see it nonetheless um, there was a mausoleum I missed and I'm gonna go to the <laughs> the wine making museum so I did read briefly that um, I don't know there's some grapes around here that have a high sugar content so it's cool today it's 20 degrees at the moment some dark clouds over there so i hope i don't get rained on but whatever um and yeah let's just enjoy this last day and eat some good food and see some more great things One thing I found and there's a family just walking back there um, a few times now I've been asked for uh, photos so um, yeah it's it's been really cool uh, was what I was following in Google Maps and um, this park is just a real beautiful place for reflective thought so um, yeah I'm gonna have a look around there's some in these monuments they're like books so I'm just gonna go over and have a look and um, I think there's just names in them so yeah okay. so I just looked it up and what this park actually commemorates uh, the people who died during World War II. So there are just these um, massive big metal books with names and dates in them. It's, yeah, it's really some. disappointed I made it to the the wine museum and it's closed um, Google says it's open so come on Google uh, but it is a beautiful building love the color um, the walkie was actually really really pleasant and it was nice getting out of that I guess touristy area and getting more into the normal residential area um, 
yeah walking around so it's beautiful here so many tree lined streets it's just it's just a really really lovely place and um yeah although a bit sad about this Mm, I might have even had wine tasting which is exactly what you want to do at like 9am um, but yeah so oh well. uh, we'll head back towards the Amir Tamur mausoleum because on the back side of that there is another mausoleum that I wanted to look at uh, as, 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 okay. anyway I'll um yeah I'll have a look in We'll just keep on walking and keep going. <laughs> have uh, decided to pop into the Regional Museum of Local Law and that is L-O-R-E not L-A-W so um, this looks like an old uh, some type of administrative or school buildings uh, it's really quite a lovely ground actually um, again as always the beautiful trees the, the greenery here has really surprised me so the nature, um, yeah, it's, it's been beautiful, absolutely stunning. the second level of the museum and it appears to be more of a natural history museum so through here it looks like there's some taxidermied animals and things like that so um, yeah if, if you do come here make sure you come up to the second level and um, if you're interested I feel like at any moment I'm about to be attacked by a bird oh my goodness oh that one over there's a bit creepy launcher this dude Yeah. Oh, I see you looking. <laughs> so in addition to the regional uh, museum, there is also the Jewish museum here um, because there were some uh, Jewish people who migrated here during the war. Now, um, the it's a it was yeah it was a pretty good mu uh, museum also. So for your twenty five thousand soms, you get the two museums, which is pretty good value. And um, yeah, I think I've spent I don't know forty five minutes here or so. So it's been quite good. Um, I really did like the regional museum though, only because it just has lots of information on um, on the area, which yeah that's what I'm here for. I'm here to learn more about uh, Uzbekistan, so, I mean, as well as see pretty buildings. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that was pretty good. Um, and now I'm <clears throat> just going to keep wandering around and see what I run into next. This is the park that has the Alish, Alisha, Alishi Navoy statue in it. And I just want to say it is just beautiful. It's, it's just been a really lovely avenue to walk down. Amir Timur 
um, mausoleum just there. And there is another little mausoleum just behind it. Aksare mausoleum. And it is meant to have beautiful interiors despite despite the quite uh, bland. I mean, I'm going to say bland, but it's got a dome um, <laughs> besides the exterior. So, um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to going in and having a look. set up so you can put your phone there and take a selfie with the ceiling uh, which is I mean <laughs> why not uh, it is beautiful and um, yeah 10,000 songs to get in they will unlock the door for you and um, yeah so just a, another a stunning amazing magnificent building in temperature uh, the below ground level this is the ancient spring that I thought I would come and see in the park um, the Google reviews were right it is very green and there is lots of rubbish but it is still an important um, historical place where once upon a time this is where everyone would have gotten well not everyone but you know like people local to this particular location would have got some clean water some fresh water so yeah it is important but um, yeah. it is also just a hole in the ground with some water so you can come visit it or not your choice <laughs> is a memorial to the Samarkan Tigers so um, yeah you can come and see some cats big cats alrighty um, I think it's almost time for lunch so I might find, go see what I can find um, yeah should be good just you know oh. walking past or just down and walking past Gorgeous. I just had the most random experience walking down the street and a guy was walking the opposite direction and he said to me, oh, this is Reg just down down that way. And I said, yeah, yeah, it is. He said, oh, you speak English. I'm like, yeah. So anyway, we started chatting, asked me where I was from, Australia, obviously, and uh, Sydney. And he was also from Australia. And, um, and then we're just chatting and for, you know, five minutes and it turns out we both work in <laughs> Not only the same industry, but the same job, but in different organisations. Like that is just how random is that? That that would actually happen. So um, yeah, it's brought a real smile to my face actually to be able to have a conversation with someone. Uh, and um, yeah, it's been awesome. And I'm almost here at somewhere to have some lunch. I've gone with the ravioli soup for lunch today. Um, I didn't want anything too super big because I saw cheesecake on the menu and I wanted a piece of cheesecake as well. So, looking at the, the broth, it's a clear broth that's got um, lots of dill in it. It also has some onion and some cream. Oh, so good. It smells amazing. I love dill. So for me, um, I've been enjoying um, having so much of it. Oh my goodness. It kind of tastes like, now this is going to sound really bizarre, it kind of tastes like Big Mac sauce. <laughs> and I love Big Mac sauce. Mm. 
It's the deal. I know it's the deal, but it's still so delicious. Alright, I'm worried that these are going to be really hot and burn my tongue. Mm. Yeah, amazing. Um, how about we be a little cheeky and just have a bit of a cheesecake? Oh, it's a bit crumbly. Oh, but super delicious flavour. Um, consistency is not what I would normally have in a cheesecake, but the flavour is spot on. Amazing, amazing meal. I've made my way out in Uber to, well, many Yandakes, to Conigal uh, Tourism Village. So, there is meant to be a paper mill here. Um, and yeah, let's just start. Uh, I have no idea what else is here. Does according to Google's uh, photos that people have uploaded, it does look like a nice green environment. So let's just uh, have a walk through and see what we can find. don't care if there is anything here to see or do um, it is just so tranquil and so peaceful walking along this path um, now I can imagine it would be very different if there was lots of tourists but well it feels like I'm basically on my own it, uh, it um, is just super peaceful and I think after the hustle and the bustle of the city it's just a really nice way to cap off this uh, holiday, really. Just reflecting on all the amazing things I've seen um, and done. And I, you know, I'm still pinching myself that I was even able to come here in the first place. And so, oh, hello, butterfly. Um, and so for me, I, it's truly been a trip of a lifetime. It's been quick. Um, I think I've seen the highlights. I know there's a lot more to this country than what I've seen. Uh, and it's definitely, definitely a place that I would recommend if you're really into architecture. Um, it's got some of the, I mean, there's amazing architecture everywhere around the world. And, um, but this has certainly got some, some buildings that are really worth your time and uh, effort to come and see. So yeah, I'll, um, Keep walking and keep enjoying the uh, this time. For my last dinner, I decided to go to a restaurant near my hotel. Um, it has amazing views of the register. And um, yeah, it's a, a little bit more on the pricey side, but it's a beautiful ambiance and um, the food looks really great. I ordered the oops, fried lineman. I can smell the coriander. It smells amazing. Seriously though, the, mm. the handmade noodles 
is uh, they're my favourite. Like that's why I ordered the online menu tonight because I've really enjoyed the noodles the most. Really lovely flavour. I can't pick it. There's lots of spices in there. Tastes amazing. Um, yeah. I'm just gonna, I think it's got bacon. Mm -hmm. Meat, no idea what meat is. I'm not a big meat eater. So I have struggled a little bit while I've been over here. Meat is um, a very large part of the, the culinary culture. So if you don't like meat, um, I'm not gonna say you struggle, but I haven't seen a lot of vegetarian meals. Anyway, this is amazing. I'm going to keep eating and yeah. My last night is a bit sad. Tonight is my last night in Uzbekistan and I thought I would come and hang out with the Registan. And the reason for that is because this is the original thing that drew me to this country in the first place. Um, I have a fascination about the Silk Road and how it works and, you know, the places along the way and just how it was able to create, um, you know, these economic hubs that... We're really able to excel um, at even, you know, all the schools and the knowledge. If, if the economics wasn't here behind that, you know, we may not have had some of the things that we, we have now or it may have taken longer to learn about, you know, the stars and the moon and all of that type of thing. So I actually find the Silk Road really fascinating for more than just the trade. And, you know, I, I really just think that I've been very fortunate. Um, I've been able to take some opportunities as they've come up um, to allow me to be able to be in a position to be able to travel here in the first place. I've just been so grateful um, that I've been able to come here and spend the time in Uzbekistan. The people have been amazing. Uh, and it, it's just been more magnificent, more beautiful, more incredible than I had ever imagined. And um, yeah, and I'm just so glad that I've recorded so much of it so I can look back on this in years to come and just relive all these incredible moments and sights. And yeah, I just. It's been incredible. Registan. It's amazing. <laughs> I am now, I just went in for my Uber to go to the airport so I can go. Okay, so I'm back at Samarkand Airport and it's an amazing airport. It looks like, um, kind of looks like a book, but I think it is meant to look like the wooden uh, book holder. I think either way it is gorgeous and um yeah and i'm about to head back home so